cell phone. Okay, this is continuation for the DNS. Now, uh, where you want, it is, uh, the system will ask you when you configure DNS, where you want to store it. Okay. Uh, you want to store it uh, on the Active Directory, it is preferred, because Active Directory is more secure, of course. So it is best practice that you store it on Active Directory, okay, which is this one, tick. You take this one, okay? And it's primary zone. So if we go back here, these are the replication scopes. We already we already covered this one. Then when you are doing the installation, when you create forward lookup zone, it will ask you. This is primary zone. Just keep it default, please. And make sure that this one is ticked so that your DNS forward is stored with your active directory. Okay. Now for replication, it also asks you if you want to do replication, whether you want to replicate to all DNS servers running on domain controller of the forest. And if I have my forestcontorso.com, I want to replicate to every uh, DNS server there or to all DNS servers running on domain controllers in the domain itself, contorso.com, okay? This is the default. The third one is for Windows 2000 compatible, the old ones. We have also one option for DNS configuration, which is configuring forwarding or conditional forwarding. When a client contacts a DNS server and the DNS server does not know the answer, it performs an iterative query. We have already talked about this. Remember when we said that DNS, you ask the server, does not know the answer, it will do an iterative, okay? To find the answer. Your DNS servers can be configured to be forwarded to another DNS server, okay? Or a conditional forwarder based on the domain name query. We are not doing something like this in the lab. This is advanced configuration, but you need to do, you know, that this is, can be done. A forwarder controls name resolution queries and traffic it can improve the efficiency of name resolution on the network to make it more faster. And you can send it, forward it to another server who maybe has more updated information or closer to the requester. Okay. So what's the benefit of having a forwarder for DNS? It can make DNS more efficient. Some events we have to do, or the system should do the zone transfer. It's not optional, it has to be done. What triggers that? The initial transfer occurs when a secondary zone is created. When you create a secondary zone, you have to, it will copy the primary zone to it. That's why we, have, we are creating a secondary. One of the options is it will transfer. It will transfer. The zone refresh interval expires, or when there is a zone with, for the zone, DNS zone, there is a time, yani time to live, or we call it time uh, fresh, refresh interval. Yani after some time, you need to refresh, do a zone transfer because to get a new updates. The third case is the DNS server service is started at the secondary server. The DNS server service is started at the secondary server. Or the master server notifies the secondary that there are some changes. You have We have to do zone transfer. And I am the master. I, I have done some changes. I inform the secondary, okay, there are new updates. Let's do zone transfer. 
compulsory. Okay. So please know these cases. Okay. Any questions, by the way, about this? Is it clear? Huh? We have three zone, types of zone transfer: full zone transfer or incremental. Incremental meaning like when you do backup. You know, incremental is only the updates. I don't have to. Okay, first time I have done full zone transfer, and then after some time there are new changes. I only will transfer only the new changes. No need to transfer everything because the other did not change. So this is faster. The third one is DNS notify. DNS notify to transfer. Okay. The DNS is sending a notify to transfer. So then we have to fulfill the requirement. This one, DNS notify. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Also, this is advanced settings. We are not doing it in the lab because we are only this is only one this is only one course, first course on Microsoft networking. If you notice, this is the only maybe course you are taking. Maybe in the future we will have more advanced and we will do all, a lot of these labs. On okay. By default, zone transfers are disabled. You can choose one of the following to enable to any server, so allows data transfer to any server that asks for a zone transfer. Problem with this, it is least secure. Because I can transfer to any server that requests, because this is not secure. Or only to servers listed on the name service server tab. This one, restrict zone transfer to secondary DNS servers as defined with the NS resource records. Shabab, name server tab meaning yani, the same domain in your domain. Okay. And you are listed them there. In the DNS, I am listed, I am listing that, okay, zone transfer can be used only to these servers. So I have a list. Or only to the following, I can restrict it even not only to the servers that are in the name server tab, to specific servers there. Yani not anything under contoso.com I can transfer to it, no. Maybe I want to transfer only to maybe dns10.contoso.com. Not anything under contoso I want to transfer to. Okay. So which one is more secure, you believe? Third one, of course. To check the zone transfer, Okay, you will need you will need to go to zone transfer. Okay, and then here you put the option allow zone transfers, and you see the options <coughs> to any server. Okay, and only to servers listed. <coughs> okay, uh, I think it's small. Maybe yeah, these are the three settings there. You see these ones. They are here. We are not doing this <coughs> in the lab. This is the configure notify option. I think you asked me about notify. It is here. Okay. So automatically notify. DNS records, DNS zone database is made up of a collection of resource records which are used to answer DNS queries. And these are the type of DNS records. Okay. Each resource record RR specifies information about a particular object. And each record has Type, expiration time, it's not forever, okay? So let's see some examples. Uh, maybe here with, it's not there, but I will tell you in the lab. Some, some of these examples are AA, 
this is this is for IP version four record. We will show you in the lab. We have double A, double A, yani four A's. This is for IP version six, okay, and so on. PTR is for reverse record. Reverse record. Reverse. Uh, remember, we said DNS. You put like contoso.com and then you put it will put the it will find the IP address. The opposite or the reverse, you put the name of the, and it will, you put the IP address, it will still give you the name. Okay. When you install domain controllers, uh, sorry, many of resource records are automatically created. This is automatically created. You don't have to enter them, such as clients or the DHCP servers. They create the host and pointer records. PTR, who I just told you. When you create a record, let's say you create a record that contoso.com, this is the IP address. There is one option when you create that. If you tick it, it will create automatically a reverse for PTR. Okay, so it's always good practice to do that. Okay, when you install a DNS server, NS records are usually created. When you install domain controllers, service location SRV records are created. So we're creating these records is really very simple. We will do it many times. We will do many records. So maybe the naming looks maybe, but it's easy for us. Okay. So the last slide is the summary. Please ask me if you have any question about this chapter. Well, I'll take the attendance. So for the uh, previous class, I will uh, mark the attendance. Everyone was here, is here. I will assume that. Abdullah Jabber, Abdullah Musa, Abdul Aziz Muhammad, Muhammad Abdullah, Muhammad Jamal, Muhammad Saleh is here, Muhammad Yusuf, Muhammad Yusuf, Muhammad Said, Omar Mahmoud. Rashid Muhammad, Sultan Khalid,
You take a short break, you know, five minutes, and then we start a new chapter. Thank you. 